Just a reminder that we have been going through Paul's letter to the Ephesians. And in this letter, um, Paul brings out our place in Christ Jesus, or the gift of God in Christ Jesus to every one of us. For God has given us the greatest gift that we can ever imagine by giving us himself, his son, Christ Jesus. And for that, we are so privileged. That is highlighted in the psalm, I think intentionally the psalm of today. How great is your works, O Lord, our God. And in one of the verses of that psalm, it says, what is man that you care for him, mortal man that you keep him in mind, man who is merely a breath. But the high point of it is the crown of glory given to man is the gift of Christ himself who has come to show us the way to the Father. And in that reading, Paul reminds us of the special privilege of asking for the gift of wisdom and knowledge so we are able to discern what is good, what is perfect, and mature. Let me read it out. It says, um, may the eyes of your hearts be enlightened that you may know what is the hope that belongs to his call. The eyes of our mind, that is interior discernment, especially in this time, you know, many things are going on, both at home and also the country, perhaps places of work, or even in our individual lives. And we find ourselves in certain confusion. How do we discern the, the, the right decision or the option to take at those moments? It is only the gift of God that will help us, the Holy Spirit as highlighted in the gospel, that will help us to discern what is good and what is the will of God. And we pray in this mass also for that special gift. Many times we find ourselves in that tight position, what to do and what not to do. And when it comes to our faith as Christians, how would, do we defend our faith? How do we stand firm, especially when we are confronted in our time, the wave of civilization has become an attack to our Christian faith in many ways. How do I stand firm to profess and protect and also defend the faith of the church? St. Ignatius of Antioch that we celebrate today is a good example. He was the third bishop of Antioch after uh, St. Peter and then the other one, I can't remember his name. So he's one of the apostolic fathers and he wrote about seven letters uh, to talk about the unity of the church and how we are to defend the church. But anyway, he was arrested after 40 years of being the Bishop of Antioch. And on his way, those times during the time of persecution, Christians were uh, gathered in Colosseum. If you've been to Rome, uh, it's one of the places that uh, they will take you on tour, the amphitheater where Christians were fed to the beasts or wild animals, and Ignatius uh, died that way. So on his way, he, he wrote seven letters to Christians to keep firm and stand firm in all conditions to defend the faith of the church and not to be afraid to stand for God. He did not deny uh, the faith of the church. In our own time, we may not go through physical martyrdom like Ignatius did, but also a simple way of denying oneself, you know, holding tenaciously to my will or insisting that uh, it is what I want that has to be done. Letting go of that can also be a way of suffering martyrdom or uniting one's, uh, one's desire with that of Christ, a way of offering up once uh, uh, perhaps there is something you, you would like ordinarily to do, or even going through pains and sufferings, a loved one being in the hospital, or even personal pains, instead of complaining, why this, why the other one, we can unite all of that to the suffering of Christ and also the sufferings of 
other people in uh, hospitals or anywhere, any part of the world. That way, we share in that knowledge of Christ himself who continues to enlighten the eyes of our mind. Finally, for the uh, Holy Spirit in the gospel, many times people are asking, uh, the sin against the Holy Spirit, nothing is unforgivable, nothing that we can ever think we've done is beyond the mercy of God, except refusing that God can forgive us, you know, refusing the grace of salvation. And I don't think uh, anyone in this our time, perhaps, I don't know, in this our time, we refuse the grace of salvation. So my brothers and sisters, as we continue to uh, celebrate this Eucharist, the sacrament of love, the sacrament of unity, we ask the Lord to open the eyes of our mind so we are able to see the hope, the grace, the revelation that awaits those who stand firm at all times. Amen.